Hey everybody, Josh here. So if you're in the market for a pair of wireless earbuds, there are a ton of options on the market right now. Now Beats currently has three options, the Studio Buds, the Fit Pros, and the Power Beats Pros, but are they any good? And if so, which one might be best for you? Let's get into it. Now, first of all, let's answer the question of why Beats. Now, some of you guys might not know this, but Beats was acquired by Apple. And so if you're going with something made by Apple, why not just get AirPods? There's sort of two reasons. And the first one is fit. Now, for a lot of people, AirPods just simply don't work for their ear shapes, whether it be the regular AirPods or the AirPods Pros. So Beats provide a good alternative. The second reason is sound quality. So a lot of people complain that AirPods don't have enough bass and with Beats, you're certainly getting a lot of bass. And then when comparing Beats to other third party manufacturers like Sony and Bose, Beats still do have that advantage when it comes to integrating with the iPhone with one touch pairing and not needing to download a separate app. And so those are a few reasons why I would consider Beats still a pretty good competitor to some of these other earbuds. But yeah, with that out of the way, let's get into the comparison. So starting from the outside, here are all three cases. The Studio Buds and the Fit Pro cases are a bit more of a standard size and can therefore fit in your pocket pretty easily and can be taken around with you. On the flip side, the Powerbeats Pro case is much larger to accommodate for that ear hook design, which makes them a little bit better for keeping them in your gym bag because that case is pretty massive. For charging, the Studio Buds and Fit Pros charge via USB-C, while the Powerbeats charges via Lightning. Unfortunately, none of these cases support wireless charging. As far as battery life, we do get the most battery life with the Powerbeats Pros. However, these are the only earbuds that don't have active noise canceling out of the three. So it makes sense why they last so long. Now let's move on to the buds. As you can see, these three buds are shaped very differently and have different ways to secure them in your ears. The Fit Pros feature this wingtip design that pushes against the inside of your ear to push them in place, which do work pretty well, although due to that constant pressure, they were a bit uncomfortable after about an hour of use. This wingtip is pretty flexible, although it's not able to be swapped out with different sizes. The Power Beats, on the other hand, have this hook that go all all the way around your ear, which are actually surprisingly comfortable and were also insanely secure when it came to working out. I personally didn't experience any pain or discomfort when it came to using the Powerbeats Pros. And then the Studio Buds are the most standard looking buds with a regular fit, just like any other earbud out there. Now, one minor annoyance with the Studio Buds, with them being the cheapest, they don't support auto play pause. So when you take them in or out of your ears, you're gonna have to manually pause the music. Now, speaking of playing and pausing, each of these earbuds do have multimedia buttons on each earbud. On the Powerbeats Pros though, you do get volume rockers on the bud itself, which makes it really convenient to change your volume on the fly. Now, as far as these buttons go, they are physical buttons. They're not touch sensitive. So I quite like that. And you get a nice satisfying click when you click into them and the activation force isn't too high. So you're not like pressing the earbud further into your ears. So in general, I found all of these earbuds multimedia controls to function pretty well. Now, what about sound quality? Now, it should go without saying at this point that Beats has become pretty synonymous with the word bass. And while these earbuds do have slightly elevated bass when compared to something like my AirPods Pro second gen, they're not anything out of the ordinary and certainly weren't overwhelming at all. In fact, for listening sessions where you're doing something a little more active, maybe you're at the gym or you're running, I actually really prefer using these buds as they sort of get me in the mood of working out with that heavy thumping bass. And these buds do have slightly more subdued mids, so they're not gonna sound the warmest when it comes to vocals and jazz and you know classic music, but I don't think that's what they were intended for. In terms of clarity, I'd put them slightly below the AirPods, but again, it's really hard to tell the difference. And honestly, I was really impressed by how these beats sounded. Overall, they're not gonna win any awards. And if you're doing any critical listening, again, they're not gonna be the best, but for what they were designed to do, which I think is just complement an active lifestyle, like they literally put a whole hook around this earbud. Uh, I think these are gonna sound just fine. 
Now, when it comes to active noise canceling and transparency mode, unfortunately, that is where these buds fall short. So for some things like constant noise, like your fan or your HVAC system, where you're just at home and it's just a quiet hum in the background, I'd say these do a pretty okay job. And even for applications like going to the gym, I found these to be more than sufficient. But when those sounds become elevated and become a lot louder, like a plane, for example, or you're at a cafe and there's background chatter, that's when these noises really start to come through. And when I threw on my AirPods Pro second gen for comparison, it was a no competition. Buds like the AirPods Pro second gen, Quiet Comfort Earbuds 2s, and WF-1000X M4s really have taken the noise canceling to the next level where these buds really just can't compete in that space. But again, I'm only saying this because I really push these buds to the extremes. I think if you're just using these in normal conditions like going to the gym or using them at home. They do perform pretty well. When it comes to transparency mode, these two buds do have that slightly muffled treble sound. So again, not the best, but not the worst at the same time. Now the Power Beats, although they don't get active noise canceling or transparency mode, they do have pretty good passive isolation. And so using these at the gym, I really wasn't bothered by any of the sounds around me. Although at this price point, it would have been nice to see. Now, in terms of mic quality, you are listening to the Beats Studio Buds right now, and this is what they sound like in a quiet environment. This is what the Beats Fit Pros sound like in a quiet environment. And then here is what the Power Beats Pros sound like in a quiet environment. Now, here's what the Studio Buds sound like in a loud environment. Here's what the Beats Fit Pros sound like in a loud environment. And here's what the Power Beats Pros sound like in a loud environment. And for quick reference, here's what the AirPods Pro second gens sound like in a loud environment. Now, the last thing I'll talk about here is the H1 chip. So the Powerbeats Pros and the Fit Pros with their more premium price tag does come with the H1 chip, which means that once you pair these to one of your iCloud devices, they're gonna show up on all of your other iCloud devices, which makes it great for people who are heavily invested in the Apple ecosystem. This feature also makes multi-device switching much more convenient, which I found to be huge when switching from my iPhone to my MacBook, for example. Okay, so to wrap this video up, here are my thoughts. And as you can see, I'm in a different location. I'm in Taiwan. So with these Studio Buds coming in at about $150, you are saving a bit of money as other premium buds do come in at about 250. So saving 100 bucks, not bad. These buds sound good enough, are pretty stylish, come in a bunch of different colors and are overall pretty solid. The only thing that you're sort of sacrificing is the subpar active noise cancellation, which if you're willing to give that up and save a hundred bucks, make these a pretty good option. Next up, the Fit Pros. Now these also come in a bunch of different colors and these retail for 200 bucks, making them 50 bucks cheaper than some of the more premium options. In my opinion, these buds are great for the gym with that wing tip design. They stay in your ears really well. However, again, it's the ANC that is pretty subpar. That's sort of a deal breaker for me in this price range at 200 bucks. I'd rather just spend the extra 50 bucks and get something that I can rely on for all sorts of situations. And I'm talking about the Apple AirPods Pro second gen, the Bose QuietComfort Earbuds 2s, or the Sony WF-1000XM 4s. So if you're interested in that video, I'll have it down below. Now, the only reasons to consider the Fit Pros over some of these other earbuds is if you're an Apple user, you want better fit and you want better bass. The Fit Pros have that H1 chip, the wingtip design and more bass. So it sort of ticks all of those boxes. Okay, and last but not least, we have the Power Beats Pros. Now these are the dedicated gym earbud in my opinion with their big bulky case. It's gonna be hard to carry around with you. So more of a dedicated earphone and at $250, they are pretty expensive. At this price point, they don't have active noise canceling, which in my opinion is sort of a deal breaker. The main reason to recommend these earbuds are I'd say for intense workouts. And if you find no other earbud satisfies your needs for staying in your ears, then maybe give the Powerbeats a try. And I do think that you can find them on sale pretty often. Like right now I'm seeing them on Amazon for about 200 bucks, which makes it a little bit easier to recommend. But yeah, that's been my comparison. Hope this video helped you out. If it did, definitely use my links down below to purchase these earbuds as it does help support the channel. If you're interested in more tech videos, definitely hit the subscribe button down below. I'm trying to reach 200,000 by the end of the year so any help is greatly appreciated. I'm gonna try to get some videos out while I'm in Taiwan as well. Maybe some Taiwan tech. But yeah, 
drop a like on your way out and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.